Just, uh, just give me a minute. I'll, I'll be okay in a minute. Ah. My name is Ray and I'm a U.S. Navy veteran. Does this tie make me look fat? <laughs> I've been serving for 21 years. I'm a Chief Warrant Officer in the United States Navy. Perfect, and now do it, look at me. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay, no, I know. <laughs> I served in uh, Korea, December of 51 until January of 53. Thank the good Lord that I'm, I got back safe and sound and all in one piece. Very fortunate when I am home to be at home just relish that moment. Whether you step off the plane, step off the ship, that first step always feels really good. Right when you pull in there, you, you come, in, come into the channel and then there's a big American flag. So for me, that's coming home. There is one memory in particular of coming into Pearl Harbor at midnight and most of the families had left, not mine. Even walking into a house, sometimes it's months before you just go into a personal home and there's my five-year-old son screaming at the top of his lungs for his dad. And it echoed across Pearl Harbor. That was great. That was a long 10 months, and it was a wonderful uh, opportunity to be with my family. Well, the most difficult part about coming home was getting off the ship in the middle of the night of San Francisco, and they just said, go home. I mean, what do you mean, go home? I said, well, yeah. I said, well, how am I supposed to get home from here to Ventura? And this is about, oh God, maybe one or two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, in the middle of the night, we walked approximately, I would say maybe five miles to get to Highway 80. And so then I hitchhiked from there and uh, they gave us our discharge, that was it. They never told you, uh, you know, get checked for, or anything else like that. So I, I've had uh, the ringing in my ears uh, since 1952 because I was the gunner of a water-cooled 30 caliber machine gun. And uh, back then they weren't very quiet. And then of course also, uh, I got back from Korea in uh, January of 1953. It would have been around 19, 95, 96, that I found out that I had uh, PTSD. In 2009, our veterans were coming home by the thousands, and they're standing around asking, where do I turn? Who do I ask? Where can I go? Where's my help? And it was across the board. Uh, mental health support, physical health support. We need to hire more doctors and uh, you know, psychiatrists especially, to help talk it out. Uh, they can't hire enough people to do the work that needs to be done. The core values of the, of the Navy have, I think, have stayed the same. What has changed is we are a, a, um, an image of society, and society has changed in, in, in many ways, and so has the military as far as that goes. Some kind of struggle with that. And some veterans find themselves on the extreme ends of our society. Uh, homeless, uh, jobless, a number of maybe medical concerns. I have a lot of friends and they're retiring now and some of them have retired. And it's just getting back into the civilian sector of employment. Uh, there's a lot of concern, a lot of worry. Some are fearful. Imagine doing a Google search and you're, you put in veteran and legal aid and you get 16,000 hits. Which one do you choose? Where do you navigate when it's a tsunami of goodness coming at you. Or imagine that you, you Google it for your zip code and it comes up with zero. And now you're in a desert of resources. Um, so we could do a lot better. My name is, Ray. this is my... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and my name is Raymond and this is my son Ray. And my grandson Casey. When Ray would come home, it's indescribable for somebody to describe the feeling and the joy at knowing their home, their home. Coming home without a family, it's, it's difficult to imagine. 
find some family. I wouldn't know, I don't know how to answer that any other way. Where do they find their family? They go down to the American Legion. They go to the Veterans of Foreign Wars. They have family. If they serve, they have family. And their family is the, the shipmates and their comrades, the fellow Marines, the fellow soldiers that they serve. That's their family. Be thankful for the support you do have. And if you do find yourself in a support deficit to reach out and, and ask for help or, or voice that, don't suffer in silence. It's where we tell each other all the time we love each other. That's basically the feeling that we have. Just too bad I can't spank you anymore. <laughs> Not that I would anyway. <laughs> Camera's dead. Camera. <laughs>